what is up all of our facebook family and friends welcome sunday nights at seven um, the devil is a liar, so let's go ahead and rebuke him off yes, of this. Of off, um, we are so grateful for everybody who tunes in tonight. Uh, we just want to tell you thank you. You, you see uh, our family over there and Mr. Owen Passman, and what, we're what? so blessed to have you guys here with us tonight. Before we get going, I do want to make a little bit of house cleaning. Um, July 8th, we just want to invite everyone uh, to the land out here in Effingham County, we are going to have an incredible night with high expectations of the Lord showing up and just doing what the Lord does, changing lives, amen, yeah. showing people the love that he has for us and just wrecking us in his spirit and yes. um, just releasing and breaking bondages, amen. Uh, we, serve, amen. <laughs> we serve a good, good father. And uh, we are excited about July uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, we're going to start praying it in at probably around 640, 645. And we're just going to till up the land and see. Um, we do want to say wherever you're joining us from, drop it in the comments to, uh, tonight in the chat. Um, share this. It really helps us get the word out. Uh, really helps us uh, impact the world that needs Jesus Christ so bad. Hey, Miss Louie, doing um, the world needs Jesus. Straight up. I mean, it, in the church, a lot of times, especially in the American church, we get caught up in a lot of the other stuff that's going on. And and we see maybe a government that might not be as strong as we would all hope it would be. All these other stuff, but straight up, like there's only one Jesus and the world needs Jesus. Amen. So what's up, Rob? How you doing, brother? By you sharing this, it just helps us get the gospel out because that's that's why we're here. This is what we're doing. We're just exalting the king. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and and helping people to uh, who they are in Christ. Amen. So again, July 8th, we everybody to be there um, and, and come with high expectations because God meets you in your expectations. Yeah. Amen. He meets us where we expect him and we expect the dry, dreary, you know, just the center mentality, just bare Barely dragging our butts to church on Sunday, get our kicked all week long and maybe get to church next Sunday. That's the type of life you'll live. That's where he'll meet you. But if you go, I want to be set on fire for God. I want the next thing. I want the new wineskin that got out. I want his spirit in the fullness. I want the life and the life more abundantly that he promised the word. I want Jesus. Amen. He'll meet you there. He will meet you in nations because we all get as much Jesus. We all have as as much Jesus as we expect, mm -hmm. as much desire, as, as much as, as we seek him, he meets us there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's our expectations on July. Bring a towel. Yeah. We're going to be having baptisms. We're going to be having water baptisms and Holy Ghost baptisms. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yes. So it's going to be. And uh, we just want to invite all you guys out. And by sharing this, you're helping the word out about that. Amen. So just share this if you could. Uh, drop something in the comments. Drop your name. Well, I guess you ain't got to be. Um, no. Tag somebody. Yeah, tag right. somebody in the comments and, and just uh, and pray that our computer quits dragging. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Throw emojis. Yes, throw up some emojis and, and just help us get the word out. Amen. Yeah. So uh, with further ado, let my, my brother and sister Owen and Miss Sarah come on and introduce themselves. And so I love you. Praise the Lord. Well, yeah. I love you guys so, so, so much too. Sarah and I, we are just so honored. Um, it's an honor to, to, to know the King and to have his word and to share his word. Mm -hmm. And it's an honor to be a part of the body of Christ. And so we're just, super excited for for tonight's discussion for god to do what he does best um we were praying earlier and 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 jack you mentioned that he's the rock of our salvation and and there's nothing that can come against the rock you know and and, and when we're desperate like that and we come to to jesus he's he's willing and he's able and he's faithful to to fill us amen, amen. so we're excited. We're very excited. Amen. Well, I just want to say we love the Williford's with all our hearts. 
Um, you guys are very special to Owen and I. Yeah. Um, for our, the the similar paths that the Lord has brought us upon, and we know that the covering we have from the both of you is very special. And to be able to come on here and share this with you guys, um, we just love you both. Thank you for trusting us to share the word with you guys, because you the Bible says test the spirits, and because um, you know you can't speak the word with everybody, because not everybody has a different interpretation of the word sometimes and um but you guys trusted us to come on here and share the word with you so thank you for that um to facebook and whoever's watching world um we are owen and sarah kansius yes um yes. we yeah, have we been together having... married some issues yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's just awesome. it's on our end it's some, for some reason, we just had a bad storm and the internet really dragging. It's, and it's on our end. Okay. And it's on our end. We're having issues with internet all the way out because of a storm that just, just came through. Um, but sorry. Sorry, go ahead. And uh, you were just about oh. to talk about how long y'all have been married. Yeah. Yes. We've been married for nine years. Mm -hmm. um, we've known each other for 11. Yep. yep. Um, we live here in Florida. Central Florida. Yeah. Um, fun fact: Owen and I <laughs> met on a Christian dating website. Um, Praise God for that. <laughs> <laughs> All things are possible with God. So um, I just told him today our running joke. I'm going to start using is he's the best thing I ever found on the internet. So. <laughs> Pretty much. So um, I, we we love the Lord. He's. <laughs> He got it. There may there may be a little bit of a lag with the internet, but he got it. That word is not gonna come back void. And we I, I say I say that in a in a laughing matter, but also, you know, for, for those who may know me and who those who, who don't, um, there's there's joy in the Lord and but at the same time, I'm gonna laugh about something and be serious at the same time. So we're even now declaring that God's word is not gonna come back void. Yeah. So those who are hearers of his word and to receive that word and then implement that word in their lives, the word says to be a doer of the word, God is going to be faithful to, to work Amen. through you. Amen. Um, so I call Amen. him pastor husband because <laughs> he has been a pastor now for five years. Five years. Five years. Um, and we have pastored a small home church. Mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to find the verse. It's an Acts. It's an Acts. It's yes. an Acts uh, that that it talks about how the church, when the church began, they started to meet in each other's homes daily, breaking bread and being in prayer. Um, a lot of times, people don't really consider home churches, but home churches is really what the Acts Church did right. at that time. You know, they met in synagogues and things like that, but. Just a, 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 a amazing thing, and we've seen the glory of God move heavily, even in the homes. Even in our home church. So right now we are, I would say we are in transition, um, and we just we go where the Lord leads us. We assist ministries wherever the Lord takes us. Um, we believe wholeheartedly in one body of Christ. Uh, we don't believe that. Um, this one is better than the other one. When you said it earlier, Pam, when we were talking on the phone, the fivefold ministry, we wholeheartedly believe in the fivefold ministry and what uh, a fivefold ministry means to the body of Christ. Um, so as a pastor and um, also as a prophet, we believe in, in bringing that to the body of Christ. And that's what we're going to do here tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 And I, I just want to commentate a little bit right there because my brother Owen is he always does have such the glory of the Lord. Uh, you know, when I was thinking about what what to bring tonight, uh, what the Lord in store for us, because I don't plan way out for these things. Right. I, I allow the Lord to kind of everything. And and I thought just Owen and how he's always, always just so full of Lord. And, and, and I just begin to ask God, you know, have that joy and, 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 and to navigate that the root of business existing. And, you know, that's what we're going to be covering tonight is the root of bitterness, because I'll be honest with you, like that, that's a big hindrance right, right now to the body of Christ. 
Uh, we see a lot of men right now that are leaving churches, uh, pastors that are kicking people's ministry. It's an oath. Yeah, it's an oath. Yeah. 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 Jack, I think the sound went out. Jack, your sound is going out, brother. I'm going to go on Facebook. That's a double check. The uh, the tech one here, Sarah's the tech one out of the two of us. She's going to start going on to Facebook to hear to see if... Uh... I know Todd said lost sound. Okay, so the, yeah, they're saying that the, the sound is lost on your end as well. Well, meanwhile, he's getting his sound back. Um... I just want to say thank you to everyone who's tuning in as well, too. I see a few comments, uh, Chris yeah. and Todd and Sean Davis. Love you guys, Robert, Josh, everyone who's tuning in. We, we greatly love you guys. And um, like I said, this word is going to come out regardless of the the uh, difficulties that are happening on on the end of sound. It's not going to come back forward. So we're going to press forward for that high Amen. calling and and just intercede for everybody here tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. You want to give it a quick test, Jack? See if you're if you're back. No, no sound. No. You know the enemy. I rebuke you, Satan, because you notice how Jack says the root of bitterness. Bitterness is what's attacking the church right now. And the minute he said that, the sound went out. Mm, yeah. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I command every sound wave under the my voice, under the, the Holy Spirit, and by the blood of Jesus to work properly now in Jesus' mighty name. I stand behind my husband and the word, and I stand behind the word, and it's that it will go out and not come back void. And this word is for somebody tonight, God. You didn't do this for no reason. We trust in your perfect will and your perfect plan tonight, God. And it shall be so in Jesus' mighty name. Release it now, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Todd, for praying. Yes, yes. I love that when the church just starts getting to work. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, we there got we, some sound back. There we go. Hallelujah. Can y'all hear us? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. All right. He's an time, All right. God. So, <laughs> yes, he is. This is really going to be Weird. your. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We rebuke the enemy right now off of these, these electronics. Yes, right. It Man, it's crazy how right when we began, we were meeting before this and praying before this, the storm blew in. And now we have uh, we, we have trouble ever since that storm. So right Right now, I, I'm in agreement with my sister. We work of the enemy off Jesus. of this, these electronics right now. In Jesus' name, you will run as you are designed. We command it right now in the name of Jesus. And so, uh, Amen. Amen. all right, brother. Well, I'm, I'm going to let you just go ahead and dive into um, to, to the root of bitterness and really just talk about what it means to you. Um, where you. Where do you see it in the body right now? Um, where do you see the effects of it? Because when I, we began to talk about this thing, you know, anything with a root means a, a place where something gains nutrients, right? A, nutri a, a root is something where a tree or a bush or even grass or, or any type, anything that springs up, right? It's where it's, it's a place. When you're talking about a root, that is a place where something gains nutrients. Not only that, it gains support, right? So it, when we're talking about a root, of bitterness, right? We have to understand that that's something that's underlying. It's it's it, it's normally what you do not see, right? It is the thing that supplies a tree or or a bush, normally a some some type of a stalk, right? If we're talking about an oak tree, of course we're talking about a trunk and even up to the to the to the fullness of the tree. But then it creates fruit, right? So if we're talking about a tomato bush that has a root, it's gaining nutrients from the oil, right? through a stalk. And then that is creating fruit that you see and not only see, but other people as well as ourselves take in. Right. And so the root of bitterness, I just want you to kind of, you know, go off of that and even begin to talk about what's to you. 
Well, praise the Lord, Jack. Um, you know, it, this may not be in a, a big kind of corporate sense, but you're talking to someone who has been doing a little farming in, a, in his life. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I love that sense of the Lord being able to take something in the physical and relaying it to people so they can understand spiritual things. Um, it's a, it's a highly, highly uh, advanced tactic that the Lord uses there, I may even say. And so I have to ask the question as well to answer your question is to say, what's in your soil? You know, what's in what's Come in on. your soil? And and the word talks about in Mark about fertile ground. And, and some people had uh, mm, yeah. good ground, good soil. Some people had uh, a, a, a soil that had rocks mm, yeah. and, and some people had soil that had thorns and, and weeds growing in it. Mm. And I have to ask the body of Christ, what's in your soil or otherwise what's in your heart? What is in your heart? Because. Mm. The things that are in your heart will determine your path, will determine where you go, how you walk, what you do, what you speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. So it, it, we have to start on ground level and see what's going on. And you mentioned in your question as well, Jack, well, what is the position or the, the climate of the church right now? And unfortunately, but not surprisingly the word says in the last days that the enemy would try to deceive even the elect and will try to draw people away from god will try to seduce people will try to um put them into a place where now they're separated from god and we know that the enemy is constantly roaring constantly seeking who he may devour by killing and stealing and cheating and all these things so i say all that to build that that basis of we have to know uh where our heart is because it starts there Amen. it starts there mm -hmm. and from that point forward then you go to the roots and what are you uptaking in your life and then if your life is represented by that tree that jack said then your life should bear good fruit Amen. for those who belong to Jesus. Mm -hmm. The word says that a, a good tree will produce good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit, unfortunately, but a bad tree is not going to produce good fruit. And the same thing, vice versa, a good tree is not going to produce bad fruit. So we have to still check what's going on on the ground level of our hearts. Amen. What are we receiving into our lives? Amen. Amen. What are we depositing into our hearts? Are we depositing the word, which is the power to transform us? Or are we taking from the world and taking from situations and experiences and letting those things dictate us and therefore bring us to a place of bitterness? Because we're attacking the root of bitterness, but the Amen. fruit, the fruit is something that's visible the leaves and the fruit are visible and those who are walking around bitter, we can see that you're bitter. Yeah. We can see that you're bitter. That's right. And uh, I, I had this, uh, this life verse, so to speak on this issue. And it comes out of Hebrews 12, 15. And it says, let no root of bitterness spring up to trouble you lest you be defiled. See, the Spirit's bearing witness already. I, I see Pam's it. face. I saw Pam's face. <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah. yes, go ahead, Lord. That, 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 was, so, that was the scripture that God took her to in this, in this preparation. Amen. Amen. And, I, and, I, and I had the Spirit bearing witness, too. I knew it, brother. I was like, Jack and Pam, they're, they're meditating on this very scripture. I, I, I felt it. He did say that. He said it. And, um, That's right. So, so much is in that that verse let no root of bitterness so as we said already there's a root issue and then it says spring up to trouble you so those root issues that happen in your life mm -hmm. then they begin to spring up they begin to bubble up and anything bubbling over is going to start seeping into your life 
there's another verse that I, because I come full of the word. So the, the word is going to say what it has to say itself. It's not about what Owen or Sarah thinks right. or Jack or Pam thinks or anyone here in the chat is honestly, I hate to break it to you. It's not about what any of us think. Right. It's about what the Lord has said and declared. And that is what's important. And in James 3.11, it says, does a fountain send Amen. out from the same opening, both fresh and bitter water? If we're as body, as the body mm -hmm. of Christ are supposed to have living water flowing from our lives, living water, a constant flow of the glory of God, of yeah. the fruits of the kingdom of the Holy Spirit, constantly flowing, flowing, flowing. How can you flow fresh water and let bitterness Bitter come at the come same up. time? Yeah. Right. Right. Mm. Amen. Amen. And that I think this has been a thing too in in the church uh, of recent because there's been so much church hurt. And so you know I started pondering on how does bitterness you know come in? How does bitterness find us? Because many times when we're bitter, we don't know we're bitter. We don't even have the recollection to be able to look into our own lives and see that we're producing fruit out of a place of bitterness. And you know God took me into Revelation eight, man, and, and it talks about the the star that that. And it says, and the name of the star was Wormwood. And Wormwood is really deep theological discussion that we, we could have on another one. But uh, a, a third of the waters became Wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Right. And we know that the symbolic gesture of water and in, in the scripture is, is spirit. Right. So it, it's telling me that like when we, we can adopt this thing into Wormwood and it's pride. And, and there's a whole lot of stuff there that 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 wormwood discusses. But um, if if we walk in that thing, like it can kill us, mm. like it can make our spirit bitter. And so I think about you know if we're living with this root of bitterness, that it's picking up nutrients into our life. And and and, and it, a lot of times I think of it as the the tree or the the stalk of the of our life, right? Our our foundation becomes anger. Right. That some, for some reason, there, there's people on here that you, you've you been angry and you're like, I don't even understand why I'm angry all the time. Like somebody could say something to me and I'm just flying off the handle and I don't even know what's going on. I don't understand it. And this can be from a root of bitterness. Yeah. Right. Because our the stalk that holds the fruit that we produce. What is the fruit that we produce? Right. That's our relationships. Mm -hmm. That's our children. That's our ministry. Like these things are the fruit that people see that we produce that 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 we affect from a place of our life and it's created off of this place of anger that is the stalk right and so our kids don't want to be around us anymore because every time they ask us a question we're snapping at them right or we're sick in our body because we're living in a place of our anger and people see the manifestation manifest manifested sickness but it's cuz we're living in anger right and god's going come back to the root Right. Come back to the root of what's going on in your life. Right. Like you, you were hurt a long time in trauma. Right. And that we, we have this thing and, and we that happened to us so long ago and we don't even realize we're still walking in that area of the root of bitterness. Right. And we're picking up the nutrients out of the dirt. Right. And, 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 and that root of bitterness is causing so many issues in our life. Right. Um, I can I can say for sure that this happened that this happened to me personally, right? I walked around with a chip on my shoulder, and even the way I saw God was coming from a root of bitterness, right? That that e even the way that I saw the people around me was being manifested out of a root of bitterness because I began to put walls up, right? I began to not trust people, and 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 I dealt with you could ask my wife I dealt with sinus issues like three times a year, mm -hmm. like I was getting sick. Right. And, and, and it was from a place of not living healthy. Right. And, and, and so that's what I think of when I think of a root of bitterness, like it will kill you mm -hmm. like straight up. If, if we don't deal with these roots that are in our life and I'm talking to somebody on here even tonight, that like you don't you don't even understand what's manifested in your life. And, and you, you oh, well, I'm just getting sick a lot or, you know, I, you know, this or that or the other. Or pe people just always try to run me over. No, it might be the way that we're, we're treating people because of guards that we have up because we're bitter mm -hmm. wow. right um, 
and, and, and it, it manifests itself. Well, I don't get really involved in church or I won't go to church anymore. I just won't do church anymore. Why? Because you're bitter. Yeah. You're bitter that that last person, that last pastor did wrong. And I'm not I'm not a, not giving anybody any free passes or get out of jail cards tonight. <laughs> right. But what I'm telling you is you can't live your life in a place of bitterness because then you won't manifest good fruit in your life. You, you, you'll be angry at everyone and you won't even be able to see that you're angry. Mm. Right. And, and, and that anger becomes the stalk of your life. It becomes the only firm thing that you have is that you wake up every day a little bit mad and you don't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we begin to tackle the root of bitterness, I want to tell you that like it's it's freedom. Like when, when we when we we can have the joy of, of Pastor Owen, man, it, like th th that's what I love about you, dude, is like you, you you have this incredible joy in your life. And it's because you don't wake up angry every day. No. Right. He does not. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I may wake up sleepy, yeah. but not but not angry. <laughs> right, right. So, bro, brother, if you could just go into go go into you know whatever whatever path you want to take in this, but man, like even what causes bitterness in our life, man. I wanna um, I wanna let Sarah share uh, a, a testimony uh, about that, um, but I felt it was so so important that everyone have this understanding of just the severity of, of bitterness. And if I was to compare fruits like in a natural, uh, an apple and a pear uh, look very similar and similar fruits or similar bad fruits of bitterness, you have bitterness, but also unforgiveness and also the spirit of offense, offense in, in your life and offense unforgiveness bitterness all these things are like sister fruits yes and yes. and 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 they work in tandem but in a negative way of course and um and i love jack that you brought up about your physical health being affected as well sarah and i we come from a a, a healing ministry mm -hmm. and we see that all the time we yes. experience so many things in, in, in ministry where people, because of unforgiveness, because they have decided to put that wall up against their own brothers and sisters in Christ, how do you have a uh, friendly fire against your own brothers and sisters? Yeah. The word says you can't say that you hate your brother in Christ because yeah. you don't have the love of the father in you if you do that. And so all of those things, they begin to affect your physical life. People don't realize Amen. what's happening in the spirit will therefore transfer yes. into the physical. Yes, yes, yes. If you don't believe me, then how do demons do what they do? They're spiritual Come beings. Right. God is spirit. Yeah. And yet still mm -hmm. these things affect the physical, natural realm. So we have to understand that we need to put away these things let no root of bitterness spring up to trouble lest you be defiled and when we were talking before we came on the live um that last word defiled people may say okay well that's a fancy word that you know it's sounds like one thing but in its purest form it, it, it means to be uh to become impure mm -hmm. to become unclean and if the blood of Jesus cleanses us, then why do we want to put ourselves in a place again to therefore become unclean and impure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Oh, me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Miss Sarah, you share, share that. Yeah. You she, she, she's the tech one out of the two of us, so I see she's reading the comments I and stuff. Reading the comments. And um, um, but yeah, I just felt like the 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 importance of it all. But but Sarah has some more things to expound about all yeah. of that. Um. So with bitterness, um, I can testify. It's been two years since I got delivered from bitterness, and. It was a bitterness that I knew it was there. I knew that things, like you said, Jack, you you knew you were angry. You're like, why was I so angry? Or 
why did I just instantly resent Owen for no reason at all? So I, I knew to a degree that I had bitterness there, but I would just go, it's, it's, it is what it is. That was my famous saying. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord, the day I got delivered from bitterness, it was, oh, um, it was at nation's church. Um, and I was at the front row worshiping. Some ladies came over to me, started praying over me. And I, I felt this heaviness leave me. It wasn't like we talk about heaviness a lot when we talk about deliverance as we're, we are in the deliverance ministry, all four of us. Um, but it, it's a different type of heaviness when you have bitterness on you, because like Owen said, there's all these different fruits that come with it. So it just feels extra heavy mm-hmm. when you get delivered from bitterness. And when the Lord delivered me from that, he had shown me, Sarah, you were bitter because you wanted things on your own timeline. And because I didn't work in your timeline, you let bitterness seep in. There was nothing that, you know, some people will say external forces caused this to happen. No, I I chose wholeheartedly myself. I was like, today I'm going to be upset about it. Today I'm going to choose bitterness about it because I was being a toddler. I was throwing a temper tantrum. I was upset about our situation that we were going through. I was upset that I wasn't seeing the promise. I was upset that I felt my timeline made more sense than the Lord's timeline. And when I was talking to Owen about that, he instantly brought the story of uh, the Israelites leaving Egypt. Yeah, They too let bitterness seep into them when they started murmuring in the wilderness and just let me go back to Egypt. Why am I still walking around here? I don't want manna anymore. I want meat. It was because it wasn't on their timeline. And that's exactly what I was going through. I told the Lord, well, if you love me so much, you cared about me so much, and you took me out of this situation so much, how come my next situation isn't as good as you promised me? And the Lord told me it's because I want you to enjoy the process. And that was the hardest thing for me to hear in that moment. I mean, the bitterness that I was letting... It was to the point I didn't go to, I stopped going to church and I'm married to a pastor, y'all. This is real, we, like, this we, is how bad bitterness took over my life. It, 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 it yeah. came to the point where we would wake up and at that time I was I was leading, I became a pastor just recently and I'm leading the church um, and we would get up and I would say, hey, babe, um, let's, it's time to get ready. And Sarah was the one who did like the music and everything like that. And she was like, nope, no, nope. I'm. Um, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not no. doing it. And I would plead with her. Um, and, and literally we would be in the room and I would just be crying, just like tears would come on my eyes and just, but I have to continue. I have to continue to bring the word. And, and it, it really, it wrecked me at, yeah. at, at that time. It, it was, wow. you know, we talked about how an apple and a pear all look the same, but it's also a fruit that grows from a tree. You know, so now mm. I was bitter towards God. I was bitter towards his word because I'm like, your word's not coming to pass. Your word's not happening. You you said all these promises. You have over 900 promises in this word. And I haven't seen the one yet that you told me I would get. So now my bitterness started to trickle into our marriage. So now I pick fights with him. I'm like, well, you're not as dedicated into this journey as I am now. Or you don't care as much as I now. And he's like, Sarah, what are you talking about? And I would then turn angry and then I would turn upset and enraged. And it would be this, this just explosion for no reason, none at all. But I knew I was choosing bitterness. I knew I was, uh, I was comfortable in that because in a, uh, in my personality, I a little control. I knew I could control my bitterness. I, I could be just a little bitter to you today, but tomorrow I'll be more bitter. Yeah. And it helps us build the walls that we feel are protecting us. Yeah. Right. Like if I'm bitter and I'm angry, I can build a wall to keep you yeah. out. Maybe yeah. I might still be, but it's comfortable to me. So if I'm walking in that, I don't even realize that the devil's got my mind. Yeah. Like it, it, it'll it even make us the victim, yes. right? That I, I'm the victim. Like I'm so I, I've been mistreated. I've been misdone even by God. Right. I, that, that it's God's fault or it's this person's fault. And I'm angry 
I'm hostile. And it, uh, th listen to me right here. Like everybody that's on there, that's going through this stuff. It removes you away from the heart of God. Yeah. It, rem it will get you away from the heart of God. You know, I, I, you know, in Job, you know, he talks about, uh, therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. Right. Right. Like scripturally, bitterness will make you complain. Mm -hmm. yeah. It will make your mouth complain even to God himself. And therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. OK, mm -hmm. like. He was removing himself from understanding that God, that like the book of Job, we, we've heard a lot of, of things taught out of the book of Job, but the book of Job is just the same way as the rest of the Old Testament. It is a man in need of Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Jesus was walking on the road to Emmaus, right? And he told yeah. the men, he opened up all the scriptures and said, it is about me. So we can't remove the book of Job out of that. Like the book of Job is a man that needed Jesus Christ, Amen. right? He is, I don't care if he was the most righteous man on the yeah. planet. And so he was bitter He, to his own confession. He was bitter. He was a bitter person because, hey, I haven't been through what Job went through, right? But because right. of trauma in his life, because of loss in his life, because of the remo removal of love, loved ones in his life, <laughs> And the short sightedness of not understanding salvation and not understanding I'm going to see those people again. That was only a, a, a see you later, not a goodbye. Like when we, when, you know, Paul comforts people in first Thessalonians, right? That when, 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 when you're lost, Hey, you'll see them later. Mm -hmm. Right. So Job was a man who needed the security of Jesus Christ. Even though he was the most righteous man on the planet, everything he had was still under the control of Satan. Right. He was a man in need of Jesus Christ, but because of his uh, bitterness that he he himself confesses, he begins to complain and distances himself from God. And we all know the story of Job. God shows up and really disciplines him, right? Really sets him back and, and makes him understand that he's mm -hmm. just you know dust and ashes, right? But but you parallel that to the heart of David, right? David wasn't a perfect dude. Mm -hmm. David had this had Saul after him. David had all these things going on, but, you know, Psalm 31, you know, if you look at that on the opposite side of the coin, right? 30, um, he said, I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood while I go down to the pit? Will, will the dust praise you? Will it declare, hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. So he's in a bad spot, too. But instead of proclaiming bitterness, he says, you have turned my mourning into dancing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Like the heart of the, 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 he didn't allow his heart to become bitter. And you have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Like he wouldn't let, uh, he wouldn't let sadness and bitterness take over him. And he said, and to you, I will not be silent. Oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. No matter what the situation is like, that's how we break that bitterness and that anger and hostility that is so sometimes comfortable to us. Like we begin to sing praises to the Lord because the fruit of it looked like that complaining, the, comp the it, people, right? bitterness has many different sources yeah. of fruit that people see in us and we have, mm -hmm. and we struggle with it when we're in that place, mm -hmm. because again, it's comfortable. So if there's anybody on here tonight and, and, and that's going on in your life right now, like, like be blessed in the Lord. Like we want to pray for you tonight because you're, you're among yeah. friends. Like I've been there, you know, sister Sarah just talked about, she has been there. Like you're among friends tonight. Like if, if, if you find yourself complaining that the music's too loud, the, 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 this ain't right about that person, that, that ain't, and everything that comes out is this correction or this anger, or this hostility, you're dealing with the fruit of bitterness. You're, you're dealing with something that God, that will distance you from the heart of God, right? Because God wants to give you peace. That surpasses understanding. He wants you to understand what a good God he is, how much he loves you, how much he cares for you. Right. And bitterness will make you complain even against God himself. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's so that's so good, Sarah, because thank you for being transparent too. like so many people. We want to hide. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to talk about these things. And, and, and you know, we, we'll take these snapshot Facebook pictures like everything's perfect. Yes. But maybe I'm hurting. Yes. <laughs> yes. Look, it's, it's just a fact of life. 
No, I mean, you hit on, like, literally, you finished my testimony for me, Jack. The jealousy that set in, in my bitterness, it, I, it was to the point where I would look at myself and I'm like, Sarah, you, you're doing the most now. That's, wow. there's no need for you to be that jealous. Like, you say you trust God, you need to trust him then. So it's your your bitterness. I will I will even be as bold as to say to everyone listening tonight, your bitterness is multifaceted. Mm. Meaning what you think is one thing is probably bitterness. What you think is another thing is probably in the is seated in the sure. root of bitterness. So I'm gonna encourage you tonight to search your heart tonight. Well, ask the Lord to search your heart because searching it ourselves is not a good idea. Ask the Lord to search your heart tonight and say, God, I know there's something in me. I know something isn't right. Something has been off for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not advancing in this area of my life that I know I should be advancing. Show me God what it is that needs to come out of me tonight. And we would we like Jack said, we want to pray for you tonight. Mm. You know, I, we talk about the roots of bitterness tonight and even by the holy spirit i even hear the holy spirit say that some of us here listening tonight need to uproot the weeds in our life yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, of hearsay there's a lot of things that you allow to come into your life and a lot of these things need to be plucked out mm. yeah. pull out the weeds that are filling your heart right now and if you imagine like a garden and in that moment a lot of these weeds are choking out your testimony Come on. they're choking you they're they're like jack said they're literally killing you because you allow them to not only come into your heart but you allow them to remain now yes things come words come and and, and we know that these words they they come but as the Holy Spirit helps us to block those things. You know, Jack said that his bitterness caused him to put up a wall and he wouldn't let people in. Well, I tell you that the Lord, his name is a strong tower and those who run into him find refuge and strength. Let the Lord be the one to encamp around you and shield you from these things. But you got to uproot some stuff. Yeah. If something is happening in your life and it has caused your worship to change it has caused your prayer life to change it has caught your caught caused your your view of the father to change you need to now like sarah said ask the holy spirit search my heart what has come into my heart and what have i allowed <laughs> and help me to come to the understanding so i can uproot it amen 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 and, and, and talk about a little bit of those th things too. What are, what are some of the causes what, what, that that bitterness finds its way in the door? Like so, th th there's a lot of different doors that we can leave open to the enemy. And I don't think we, uh, you know, we give a lot of credit sometimes. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't seek its own. Love doesn't keep records of wrong. Like this is anti-bitter, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. And, and a, a lot I of love times. It. A lot of times we don't we don't even realize the things that happen to us that we pick up along the way and, and like the trauma, like some of the trauma that we go through or the people, even some words people say sometimes. How many of us I'll raise my hand. How many of us have laid in the bed at night and thought about the mean thing somebody said to yeah. us yeah. and be like, I should have said this. I should have yeah. said that. I should have ripped their heads off. I should have got. Oh, I should. I should like you're bitter. <laughs> like if, if we can't give it up, if we can't give it up and we carry that thing, yeah. like, and I'm, I've done it. I'm, I'm not coming against anybody right here. I'm like, I'll put both hands up. Like yeah. I have to rebuke that mess because I allow the enemy to operate in my mind. I'm giving him free real estate in my mind when I, I play these bitter thoughts over and over and, oh man, I should have handled that. No, God can handle that. Yeah. Like, and, and, and it shows that that I'm in. I, I haven't gotten all the weeds out of my garden, mm -hmm. right? And so, Amen, Heavenly Heaven. She said, she said, two hands up over here. Yeah, me yeah. too, me too. 
So, and, and like, this is a maturity thing that we've walked through. And this is a real prevalent thing right now in the body of Christ. <clears throat> I'll even go as far as saying it's been there since denominations were made. Yeah. Right. A root of bitterness will cause denominations. Yeah. In itself, Church split. Right. Yes. Yeah. yes. Church split. Like, oh man, he, he believes this way. I believe that way. I got to go. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. And, and, and we can't sit down and have a real conversation about uh, the differences that we carry because we're bitter. We're angry, we're hostile, and wormwood, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're all drinking pride, mm -hmm. right? And so when we sip on this pride, mm -hmm. this wormwood, and this from this prideful place, it will kill you, yeah. Yeah. right? I think it does work with pride because in uh, Acts uh, with Peter, Simon the Sorcerer, he thought he could buy God's power. Mm. And he rebuked him mm. and told him that he is poisoned by bitterness and bound by wickedness. Wow. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, again, it removes us from the heart of God. Yeah. It removes. And, and you know, we, we were even talking about prophecy today. What What is what is true prophecy? It's 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 the revealing of the heart of the father. Yeah. So uh, a, a prophet that is bitter is a dangerous person. <laughs> right? There's two really yes. dangerous prophets in the world. One that's unsubmitted. Two that's bitter. You will spew hate all over everyone, <laughs> right? It will be, it will come it will become a platform, and and, and again, it is, we begin to drink wormwood and become get in this prideful place, right? And so, um, and, and it really spews from a place of, yeah. of of bitterness and hostility. It will totally contaminate God's word. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. contaminate, contaminate and defiled. Yeah, yep. defiled. It really will. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bitterness is a very, very toxic thing. And it, it, it will not it not only toxifies our own life, but it, it, it will leak over onto other mm -hmm. people. Like if, if I'm bitter and, and, and I will come home and make my wife bitter because mm -hmm. of my of our alignment in a home. Right. Yeah. And and if she's bitter, she'll make them, our kids bitter. Right. It will. Well, that's and, what and, Hebrew says. Hebrew says at the end, at the end of it, uh, 12, 15, it says that it will defile many. Wow. You know, since we're yeah. since since we're on the vein of of talking about being defiled, um, uh, an interesting fact. So, for example, bananas. We're talking about things in the natural, but bananas they give off this certain gas, and if you put bananas around other fruit, they mm -hmm. will emit that gas and then cause the other fruit to begin to turn, and then eventually, if you let it sit there, it will spoil. So when we talk about bitterness and defiling and, and being impure, your bitterness will give off, I'm talking about in the spirit now, will give off this mm -hmm. unpleasant odor to those around you and cause others to even catch that and begin to spoil themselves. So it mm -hmm. is, it's an unfortunate thing of multiplication when you should be producing the good fruit and multiplying the things of the kingdom instead. Wow. And it, it's a, it's Amen. an immense thing, and um, and I think something that has to be said as well too is that so many people put so much emphasis on the enemy, and we know what he does. We know the enemy's plans and devices against us, but there are three sources in our lives: God, the Holy Spirit, yeah. King Jesus, the enemy, of course, and our own flesh. And yeah. sometimes we have to take responsibility and understand and know we play a part. We play a part. It's not always the devil. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's yep. honestly us. Right. Mm -hmm. And yep. Sarah's point is a verse that we had here. It talks about in Proverbs 14, 10. Go ahead, read it, babe. No, it just, it reminded me because you said sometimes it's you. I, yeah. We understand our forces, but Proverbs 14 says the heart knows its own bitterness and a stranger does not mm. share its joy. Mm. Wow. Meaning, those around you will not partake in your bitterness like that you can't like force i you know we, we talked about like if you're bitter that bitter but from from proverbs is saying a stranger does not share its joy meaning i'm not gonna align my spirit with what's happening with yours i did not enjoy the time frame that we were going through what we, we did, in, did our, not. in our marriage while I was the yeah. one being rebellious and not going to church and not submitting to him, 
I thank the Lord that he stayed grounded in that time. And he's like, I understand you're going through some things, Sarah, but I'm going to have to continue on. And I know he was doing the right thing. But in that time, I just became more bitter. I'm like, oh, now you don't care about your wife. Now my feelings don't matter. (laughs) (laughs) But Proverbs says, a stranger does not share the same joy of your bitterness. Wow. And he was not going to align my his spirit with my bitterness that's why when you say jack oh it just always has this joy i tell the lord all the time it is he is a god sent for me i am total god sent for me because i i've i've done some things i've gone through some things yeah come on it's okay only by the grace of god and I, i i will say it's such simplicity in just saying this it's a choice. Mm-hmm. Come on. Right. It's a choice. Amen. You know, the word says Amen. that laughter does the heart good. It's like medicine. And come on. Um, and, and we may be two different people in that kind of sense, but every day that I wake up, it, it's it's not that things are always cotton candies and, and rainbows every single day. We're all human, we all have emotions, we all have our ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But in, in the midst of what we experience, like you said, like King David, sometimes I just look and say, look, God, I have to fix my eyes on you and you are so much more good than what I'm experiencing. And and I may even be hurting in that moment, but I'll, I'll try to make light of things. I'll try to laugh about things um, and encourage myself like when we speak in tongues, it's to build our own spirit up, right? Amen. I know we were talking about speaking in tongues the other day, but yeah. sometimes we have to encourage ourselves. I heard one pastor yeah. say, hallelujah, anyhow. And for me, mm-hmm. I was like, well, what does that mean? I don't feel like praising God today. But sometimes you have to say to yourself, because remember, your spirit, your soul, and you have a body. So like, the, like God, you're three part being. And sometimes you have to let the spirit man be in charge and in your soul, which is your mind, your understanding, your, your emotions, your intellect, you have to, in your mind, decide and make that choice to say self, get up and worship the Lord, get up, go to (laughs) church, get up and do the things of God, get up and serve the needy. Sometimes you just, even if you don't feel like it, self, get up and hear the word of the Lord and go. Amen. You gotta yeah. tell you I just, and I want to talk about that a little bit because one of the entrances of and this is one of the main signs of bitterness. Right. So so please, everyone hear me real good right here, because one of the main main ways that we know that we that we can know that we are bitter is we have self justification. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that again. If we have a place of self justification in us, what does that mean? Well, I can be angry because they made me that way. Mm. I can be that way because that circumstance made me that way. I can be that way because they did me wrong, Mm -hmm. because they talked to me that way, because this happened to me in my childhood. Mm -hmm. And we don't focus, Owen just said it, we don't focus on the Savior that pulls us away from that. Yeah. We focus on the happiness that we will have in that situation that was wrong. Amen. So that that's one of the key ways, because, again, it's hard for us. If you are it, it, when I was in bitterness, like it was hard for me to understand or to see that I was in bitterness. But if we do that, if that is one of the main. It's a red flag. If we begin to self justify. Right. And we don't allow Jesus or God to justify our wrongs, our attitudes, our actions. And, and we he, we don't allow the discipline of the Holy Spirit, right? We begin to justify it. We begin to go, no, 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 no. You don't know what they did to me. Mm. No, 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 no. You don't know what they said. No, 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 no. You don't know how I grew up that I was molested. That was, and I'm I, and I'm not giving any of that stuff credit, right? I, like that is horrible that any bad stuff happened to any of us yeah. as children of God when we were growing up. That, that you know that we were spoken down to, that we were called this, that, or the other. But tomorrow is a new day in God. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and it reminded me as you were talking, you know, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, 
um, verse six, it says, now David was greatly distressed. This man was troubled. His people came back, found everything that they had stolen and their wives and their children were, 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 were uh, excuse me, stolen, right? So everybody was gone. He was straight to, and the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and daughters, but David strengthened himself wow. Come on. in the Lord. David strengthened himself. Like he didn't let him, he could have slid off, right? He could have postured his heart to go, God, why did you allow that to happen? Why did you allow those people? All my peeps got, got stole. All my people got wrecked. All my stuff's gone. Everybody had their sons and their daughters and their wives taken. Like everybody's now trying to kill me. I didn't do it. Yeah. Did you, don't you know, God? Didn't you see this coming already? Yeah. No, no, because that is a sign of bitterness. Yeah. He kept his eyes on the Savior and said, how you want me to go get them yeah. back, God? You teach me how to fight this. Yeah. Enemy. You teach me where to turn left, where to turn right, <laughs> when to lay down, when to get up, when to bust heads, when to put my. Throw it, throw it, throw it. We, ha we have to come to a place. If we want to break the root of bitterness in our yes, life, yeah. we have yes. to come to our place to go. And I will strengthen myself in the Lord. I will identify that issue. I will understand that it may or may not have been my fault, somebody else's fault, God's fault. It happened. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. I got to pick myself up, focus on my Savior. I know that I, I'm not uh, consumed by my yesterday, that it's not over. I got a new breath in my lungs. It's time to love and move on. It's time to release, to put some baggage down and look to tomorrow because bitterness will still your plans God has for you in your life. Amen. It will steal your tomorrow in God. Yes, it, it will take your eyes so far away from the Savior, yeah. and it'll put us on people. It'll put us on the problem. And, and, and that's another thing I wanted to talk about tonight. Like bitterness will have you focus so bad on the problem. Yeah. It will have us consumed yeah. into yeah. what went wrong. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Right? My, my, and he always keeps talking about it over and over and over. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Who's been there? <laughs> right. And it comes up again in conversation and you're yeah. like, oh, I hate that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, gosh, why did that have to happen? Man, I didn't do wrong. What me did wrong. It yeah. was, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And we come to these places that it's just bitterness speaking, mm -hmm. that it's just Satan operating through our lips mm -hmm. yeah. because we're still bitter. That's what you feel good. Yeah. It's coming out. You know. Before we came onto this live, before I looked up any scripture relating to bitterness, uh, Sarah already mentioned it, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me about the children of Israel leaving Egypt. And for those who know me, I, I, I love to study the Feast of Israel and, mm -hmm. and I love to study the word from the Hebraic sense. And so in the Passover, one of the Feasts of Israel, God commands his people to eat not only the Passover lamb, but bitter herbs and the holy spirit spoke to me today and he said i remind my people of the bitterness of slavery that they came from when they were in the land of egypt it's a reminder and there are people who when you allow yourself to remain in that bitterness bitterness literally equates to a place of slavery mm -hmm. Mm. What wow. you just said, Jack, about, about being in that place, you are literally willfully putting yourself in a box and you're closing the door on yourself and yes. you're telling the jail man to say, lock me inside. I don't want to come out. Yep. You are putting yourself back into Egypt, but the Lord has mm -hmm. already delivered you. There's some people that, that, that need, um, that, that expression or that tangible presence of being delivered from bitterness. But I want to tell you that the Lord has already paid the price for your bitterness. He's already yeah. redeemed you. He's already removed the stain of sin and the guilt and shame that came with it. So all of these things that have spurred up into your life and literally began to just fester. Mm. Sarah used the word last night about festering. When you think about something festering, it's like a wound 
that has become like sepsis and 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 just disgusting and worms are starting to eat out the wound on your flesh it has festered and saints of god you've allowed bitterness to fester for way too long pluck it out remove it god has already redeemed you he's here as a deliverer he's jehovah Jaira, he's here to provide freedom for you. Let Amen. the Lord cleanse you. Mm, Let so him take you from that place of Egypt and bring you into the promised land. Even now, the kingdom of God is now. Some of us are waiting for heaven. No, the kingdom of God is already now. <laughs> uh, a lovely uh, anointed pup here. But the kingdom of God is now. And some of us are with that earthly mindset, realizing we need to set our minds above and not here you yeah. need to know that god has delivered you from that thing let it go in jesus name. Yeah. I, I, while we're in that subject i'm going to go ahead and bust the head of a statement that's made in christian circles that comes from a place of pride and bitterness okay this this is going to be a big shot because a, this is a lot of places where it's said right please 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 don't pray for Jesus to come back tomorrow. That's a shock, right? Why would I ever say that? Why would I ever say that? Because it comes from a, a mentality of the heaven with me and the hell with the rest of the world that isn't saved yet. Like we, we have a ton of work to do as the body of Jesus. Y'all hear me. I'm not saying I don't want to meet my savior because if I, if I had to leave this body right now, so be it, right? But I got work to do. Like Jesus still has a ton that the Bible tells us don't think God is slow as we would think slow, but he is patient and enduring because he desires that no man should perish. Church, we got to wake up. Church, we have to believe and quit being so prideful that when we think about the mortgage bill or the person that offended us or the water bill or my job is hell or all this other stuff. And we go, come, Lord Jesus. Like that is a place of wormwood. That is a place yeah. of pride because you're only thinking of you. You have to think about the brother and the sister yeah. that are prodigals that haven't came home yet. Like they need time. They need salvation. They need yes. to learn Jesus. They need to understand what the blood does for them. They need to understand what salvation is. They need to understand the embrace of the Father's arms. And if he comes back tomorrow, y'all, three quarters of this world's going to hell. Like, man. we've got work to do. Yep. And so I'm telling you, that's, that's a surprise to a lot of people because we say it. It just comes out. But where is the heart of that thought? It, 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 now, if, if it's just that we want to know Jesus and we just can't wait to see his face, pray for his manifestation in your prayer closet. Pray that he shows up to you and wrecks you. Pray that he shows himself mighty and strong as even his personality, you know, he can show up to you. Don't pray that he comes back and lights this whole thing on fire. Because I'll tell you, two of his disciples said, Could, can we call fire down? Yes. Let's just call him down, Jesus. Jesus is like, what's going on with that? I hear that. Is that why I'm here? I'm teaching y'all to call fire down on everybody that don't agree with you. Are you serious right now? And so we have to understand that our heart posture can we we out of our bitterness, our mouth will speak out of our bitterness toward the mortgage, out of our bitterness toward the person that offended us, mm -hmm. out of our bitterness, out of our out, out of, to our balls. Right. That we can go. God, you know, our, our bitterness toward the homosexual yeah. uh, society. Right. And yeah. I'm not. Believe me, I'm standing strong against all that. All the alphabet stuff is of the devil, right? I'm going to tell you straight up. I ain't backing off none of it. Yeah. Like it's all, it's all an essence of the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you straight up, like we can't say that. That's not what he said. Occupy till I come. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time people say that because they're, they're scared of the darkness mm -hmm. of what's coming to the earth. Yeah. 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 Because the source of his vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, 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 we have to, Oh, I didn't mean to put that. Um, we have to come from a place that we're making sure that our heart is right before God. Like he's returning for a spotless bride. And when we're screaming and hollering, Jesus come back to save me and only me and to hell with the, all the rest of the people that are all around me that ain't saved. Cause we all know them people that ain't saved. Let's put that in perspective. Let's put that in the way the father would look at that. Right. What if my child came to me and said, God, hey, hey, daddy, hey, daddy, like life, life here is hard. Like 
I'm not getting everything that I want. I need a million dollars and I need to quit going to school. And so why don't you just take me and go move me to a desert island where we have everything that I need and leave all the rest of the siblings and the wife here. Right. Wow. That, that, that's what Jesus sees when we're calling those. That's the heart posture that we're bringing back to him. Jesus, I know I'm saved. I ain't worried about nobody. Else. Mm. That's tough. That's, 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 that's tough teaching. You ain't going to hear that in very many places, but I'm telling you that the, me, me and her call it the I'll fly away mentality. Right. I got I got to get out of here. Like, I'm not worried about nobody else. I, I got to get out. And, and it comes from was just telling somebody it, it comes from a me place. <laughs> And it yeah. comes from a root of bitterness. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know that's heavy. I know that's heavy. I know that's heavy. But but I'm telling you, like God told us, like you have to endure. Like we just talked about it. David, he picked himself up from the bootstraps and said, "I'm going to make it." God, show me, direct my path, right? And that 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 absolutely is anti-bitter, right? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus was anti-bitter. He said, I'll take the stripes. I'll take the crown. Yeah. I'll take the nails. I'll take carrying that cross up Calvary. Yeah. Not my will, but thine be done. Right. He, he, he could have complained for a long time about a lot of different things. Right. But if our heart posture, if we're going to put on Christ, then we have to be able to endure. Amen. Right. As the world gets darker, we have to understand that we're still that light. We, we can't just be bitter because Biden's in office. Come on, somebody. Come on now. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We, just, we just can't get ticked off because we don't agree with the policy. Right. I'm going to tell you all right now that if Trump would have won in, 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 in 2020, we would have still idolized Trump. Yeah. And all the exposure that's happening right mm -hmm. now for yeah. the kingdom of heaven, we would not have Roe versus Way overturned. We wouldn't have God still moving. I don't Amen. care who the president is. No matter. And so we got to embrace that this is where God has us. Don't get bitter. Get better. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I, uh, there's a Lecrae song that says, Don't get bitter, get better. I'm working at switching them letters. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> my Jack, my brother from another mother, but with the same <laughs> Heavenly Father. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. But but no, I just I, I really want to attack that because sometimes it's hidden like we, we don't sometimes we say things because that's what we've heard all of our life. And we don't understand that it's coming from a place of bitterness. It's coming yeah. from a place of selfishness but and drinking boys, wormwood. But boys, I, I know you're about to. But I just I'm itching over here. We, we, go, go. The title is the root of bitterness. Right. And you touched on it a little bit. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna say this as boldly and as nicely as possible. Things have happened in your life, things have come against you, things have made it very difficult for you, but the root of bitterness starts at choice. Mm. Ooh, come on. And you had a choice. You just said it, Jack. Jesus had a choice. And but what he said, did Jesus choose bitterness? No. Jesus said, I'll take the cross. I'll take the suffering. I'll take the whooping. I'll take the lashing. I'll do what I got to do for the glory of God. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was external forces meeting Jesus in that moment. The, the Romans were coming in on him. The Sadducees was coming in on him. He had a choice in that moment. Yeah. He could have said, I will drink the cup of bitterness and be upset mm -hmm. that I was placed in this situation. Or... I will confront what is happening to me with grace, love, and mercy. Yes. yes he Lord. had a choice the same way we have a choice. That's why God made us in his image. It says that in Genesis, let us make them in our image, yeah. in our likeness. So we have a choice. Amen. The same way Jesus did, we have a choice. And today, what are you choosing? Come on. Choose you this day. Who are you going to serve? Come on. Wow. Are you going to serve bitterness mm -hmm. or are you going to serve the king of glory? And I started itching over here and I'm glad that you went first because to tie what you just both said between being a choice and the fly away mentality. Um, there was a man of God. Some of you may know him. His name is Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And this man literally made a choice. Correct. 
the word says that he was caught up into the third heavens. He, he saw things that he cannot even speak about for you to even understand. Come on. He saw heaven. And in that moment, he had a choice to stay with God or to come back and complete the mission, like Jack is saying, that needed to be completed yes. to do God's work. Jesus even said, my meat or my substance is to do the will of the Father. And Paul decided to return and stay and complete out his race. And not only that, but this blew my mind. You know those verses in, in the word that you overlooked or you, you don't remember and you come back to it and you're like punched in the face? We were reading Romans and the apostle Paul, literally he said, I am in such place for the children of Israel, for the nation of Israel, and he wants them, I'm paraphrasing, but he wants them to, to come to salvation. He would even forsake his own salvation yeah. if it meant that the children of Israel will come to know their own Messiah. Come on. What kind of a heart posture is that? That's mm -hmm. definitely not a posture of bitterness. No. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. That's a posture of taking out I, taking out me, and only looking at God and looking at you. That's some kind of divine equation that we all need to catch hold of. It's mm -hmm. not about us. How many yeah. times, and I know you can relate to it in your own way, but how many times has God done something and you might have been blessed by that thing? And afterwards, you realize that the blessing for you was so small compared to the blessing that God did for other people. Yeah. You thought you yeah. were the one being blessed and God mm -hmm. used you to bless others in a greater way that you could ever think of. Yeah, mm -hmm. your bitterness is holding back the blessing of others as well. Come on, come on, yeah. come on! Yeah. Wow, it's, it's, wow! We we have to come yeah. back. It goes back to the fruit. Mm -hmm. If you come back into that place yeah. and you begin to bear good fruit, the word says that the kingdom of God is like a tree, and the birds come and they nest in it. People will come and flock to your life and be blessed by you. Are you going to withhold yeah. someone else's blessing? Woo. Come on. Come on. I think we can agree right there, right? That the world doesn't need our opinion or our anger. Even, you know, sometimes we get mad because it don't look the way we want and we call it righteous indignation. Yeah. Mm. So the world, the, 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 the world don't need our anger. The world don't need our bitterness. The world needs Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. So it's, 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 and, and bitterness will have you even thinking there ain't no mediator, right? Well, why am I going through this? If God's good, then why? Right. And so that th this is like the scripture that really hit me, right? Is again in Job because Job was a man that needed Jesus, right? And so in verse, in, in chapter nine, verse 18, talking about God, capital H, he, I I'm going to start in 17 for he crushes me with the tempest. He's blaming everything that's happened on God, Right. He crushes me with the tempest and multiplies my wounds without cause, right? He was a man. He was righteous, but he was a man, yeah. okay? And then so he's blaming this on God, and it said, he would not allow me to catch my breath, but he fills me with bitterness. He's saying God fills him with bitterness, okay? And so we get down into verse 33, and it says, nor is there any mediator between us, him and God. He's denying Christ. He is so bitter, so full of wrath and indignation and bitterness, right? And again, this is before God corrects him and brings it all back in, and he has to pray for his friends and get everything back squared. But, but he, he is so full of bitter that he denies. He denies that there would ever be a mediator between him, between man, and between God himself, right? Wow. Bitterness in our life can deny Christ. It wow. is anti-Christ for us personally. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you know Christ is on the other side, if you know that Christ can work all things together for the good of those that love God, right? If, if we are, are planted and firm in that, right? And again, we're, we're, I'm not throwing rocks because we've all been there, but it will take your eyes off of the Savior. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll remove the, 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 the knowing I don't even I don't even want to say the faith because we, we I know Christians that just profess Christianity that don't walk it out very good. But they 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 believe that there's mm -hmm. a savior. Right. 
bitterness will have you so messed up mm -hmm. and so full of hate yeah. it'll take your eyes off of even knowing that there's a mediator between us and god making wow. intercession for us yes scripturally mm -hmm. scripturally right yeah. that we can see that job was so full of bitterness and he blamed the bitterness that he was full of on god and then he said there ain't even a mediator between me and you wow. right i mean we, that th this is where we have to contrast job and david right because david had throne room encounters mm -hmm. david knew that there was a mediator so we never allowed that bitterness to come in. I'm talking to, to some people on here tonight that you've had throne room encounters and it's time to get the bitterness out of your life that you've been snapping at people. You've been hostile. You've been even having bad thoughts. You've been having hateful thoughts, trying to figure out where they've been coming from. And it's from a root of bitterness. It's yeah. from trauma that's happened to you in your life that you didn't necessarily understand or believe that that, that anything good can come out of it. And I'm not telling you that thing was from God because even everything that was going on with Job wasn't from God. It was because that Adam had already given everything in the earth over to Satan. And that's what God even tells Satan, everything that he's got is in your power. That's not mine anymore, mm -hmm. right? And so he, he couldn't put his mind on a savior. And, and some of us tonight, we've, we're in a place that we've, we're having struggles even putting our mind on a savior we're, we're allowing the, the stock market the cares of this world the the lb abhc qrs tuv wx people right is it we, we've become so focused on them that we're not allowing that we're not allowing our eyes to stay focused on the savior and that's what the bitterness is doing to us in our life right so, we're an hour and 15 minutes into this thing brother oh and i want i want to begin to pray for people I want, I, you know, if, if, you, if you know that you've been snapping, if you know that you've been suffering from something, you haven't been able to put your finger on it. Like, I, I want to even let you be able to go into how generational bitterness is. Like, yeah, like it's 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 ice man, Jack, brother Todd. Love you, man. But it, bitterness cat comes in generationally. Yeah, I, the, Will Lord, you share? the Lord showed me uh, when we were going to church this morning that how it can bitterness can be generational because when i started looking back at my my past my family my grandma would uh struggle with that i didn't realize it till now bitterness my mom struggled with bitterness i had bitterness my daughter has you know had bit and I, I was like look at this it's all and now then i and i just started talking about it that even my dad struggles with bitterness and yep. i seen that um with bitterness that it causes you to have heart issues um high blood pressure it can mm. cause you to have anxiety depression you can isolate it sucks the energy out of you and out of other people yep. uh and it's heart disease yeah yeah so let, let me tell you some of y'all went to the doctor about high blood pressure and we just need to rebuke bitterness yep. we just need to deal with the root of the yep. problem there ain't no pill that 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 the doctor will give you that the great physician can't cut out of can't cut out right now. Hallelujah! Right, the great surgeon, yeah. the, our Lord Jesus Christ, right now, He has already paid for those penalties. He has already paid for that bitterness. He's already paid for the mistakes you made even five seconds ago. He's paid for all yeah. of those things, and everything is under His feet. And if we be His body, listen to me, church. Yeah. If we be the body of Jesus Christ, and all things are under His feet. And we need to really grab a hold to Colossians 1 and look and see where those things are under us. Because if we're, we're his body, all things are under his feet. He's our head. They're under our feet, too. Yeah. Like the blood pressure, anxiety. It, th these things can come from a place of bitterness. Cancer. Cancer. The yeah. Bible says that it rots the bones. Anger and hostility will rot your bones. Yes. That is a biblical way of description of the description of cancer. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so th there's spirits of infirmity out there that have found access through lineages, even because your yeah. mama dealt with it. Your daddy dealt with it. Everybody screamed at each other in the house. It was just the way it was. Everybody threw stuff in the house. So, that, you know, you think that's just your portion. I'm telling you right now that Jesus paid a price to break yeah. that, that spirit of bitterness off of you tonight. Yes. And, yeah. and, and he, he has he has overcome all things. He has come that he would destroy mm -hmm. the works of the enemy. And baby, he already came. Yep. He already came. He's not coming later on to destroy just the works of the enemy. 
He can destroy them if you will accept the salvation and the power that he offers right here, right now. Amen. 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 And so if, if, if that's you, I want to I want you to share in the comments. Just be straight up. Be straight up. We want to pray for you tonight. Yeah. And brother, Owen, I'm, I'm going to let you go. I'm, I'm going to let you go and just, just begin to break those things off and begin to pray for the people who, who want prayer tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I, I, I just want to tell you, saints, that what we've done in this past hour and change is some uprooting. We've done some pulling out. We've done some yeah. restoration of the garden. And now we're going to come through and we're going to now replace those things with the word of God and bring forth nutrients for your life. And for those who are saying, I need prayer, Heather. those who are saying, it's me, Heavenly and Heather, I thank you, God, that you have brought these wonderful saints of God Hallelujah. to this live stream. Father, you said in your word that your word shall not come back void. Your word is powerful. Your testimony is true. The blood of Jesus cries a better testimony than the old covenant. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we have a mediator. King Jesus, the Messiah, the King of glory. God, you are the King of glory. And I thank you, Jesus, that you've come as a savior not only as a savior, as a redeemer, as a deliverer, oh, as a restorer, yeah. you said, and you revealed even your name, I am that I am. I am has come to deliver those who Jesus. seek him. Jesus. I thank you, Lord, and I set my faith with those who said, yes, it is me for heavenly, for Heather, for anyone else who is experiencing the root of bitterness. I thank you, Lord, that those who come and cry out to the living God, that you are faithful to bring forth that deliverance. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we Jesus. cut down every tie, every generational curse that has Jesus. come against heavenly, has come against Heather, that has come against the body of Christ. We cut down every spirit of accusation, every spirit, every familiar spirit that attached to their generational lines, yes, to their Lord. bloodlines, and we declare that the blood of the lamb has stopped it. Right yes. there, the Passover has come. Yes, the lamb of God has come to bring forth the passing over power, the redemptive power of his covenant to now restore in the name of Jesus, every spirit of death amongst these people, now. we cut you down now. And we sent every spirit that has bring forth the root of bitterness to the pit. We send it back. We send it back. In the name of Jesus, we cancel yes. that work right now. We have uprooted it even already with the word of God. Yes, Lord. It's uprooted from the heart. And Lord, we pray to create a new heart. A clean heart. A new heart. Lord, bring forth a clean heart, good ground, fertile ground now to receive the Holy Spirit. Pray. just telling me right now that as we were talking about generational, thank you, Father, for, for revealing that to my sister Pam, Father, that I cut down the generational curse in daughters right now, Father God. That it will not pass down to the daughters, Father God, of these women and those listening now and those in the future. I thank you, Father God, that you have already done a good work in their lives and in their generation and their bloodline, God. Lord, I thank you. I've seen flaming swords right now surrounding families, God. I thank you that your word is true and it shall not fail, Father God. I thank you that you've given us victory. You've given us a life more than abundant, Father God. I thank you for that abundant life living, Lord God, that we do not have to choose bitterness. I thank you that we can choose Jesus, that we can choose the blood, that we can choose love. We can choose grace and mercy, God. I thank you, Father God, that you sent that mediator and that you sent your son, Father God, so that we didn't have to stay separated from you, Lord. We didn't have to walk this world 
in bitterness and anger and resentment, Father God, but that your word says that you can take on that yoke for us, Lord. And I thank you that our 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 yoke is light now because of the sacrifice yes. of the Son. Thank you, Lord. You are thank worthy you. of all praise, Father God, and for nothing else in our life but for the blood of Jesus. Yes. We thank you, Lord. Jesus precious name. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus Spirit. name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just we just yes, we just God. stay in the throne room right now, Father God. We just love you. We thank you, Father, for allowing us. We come boldly before your throne into the courts of heaven, Father God. Lord, we make intercession for these people, Father God. Lord, we make intercession right now, Father. We just bring your word back to the throne room, Father. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs yes. and carried our sorrows. Oh, Yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted, but he was bruised for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes. Every person on here is healed. Healed. Name. We come against every lie of the enemy that spoke through generational curse. We break it right now. We plead the blood right now over that generational curse. Yes, yes. It is not to continue anymore. Right now, we speak a repentant mind. Father God, Lord, we just pray. Right now, that every mind would leave the old way, leave the bad way, Father, and turn for a better way. Turn for the better covenant. Turn for the blood of Jesus, Father. Yes, we thank Lord. you right now for blessing each person on here with Holy Spirit revelation, Father. You said that you would teach us all things, Lord, so we just simply ask you. You are the King of kings, Father. Lord, it is an honor to be before your throne, but we just ask you that you would just fulfill your word, Father God, that your Holy Spirit right now would reveal all things, Father. Every unrepentant mindset, we break you and bind you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. But we thank you that every generational curse that, that, that ran in the family until it ran into the blood, we break it right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, we thank you for full deliverance, Father God, that every lion spirit that has caused the root of bitterness, Father God, that it be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for delivering heaven from, from that headache, Father God. Lord, we thank you for new fire. New fire, Father. New fire, God. Loose her right now in Jesus' name. Heather Nicole, we just speak a blessing over you right now. We thank you that you don't have to be bitter no more. You can release it. You can trust God. You can trust his next move for your life. You can trust him as the savior of your life. You can trust him as the orchestrator of all good things for you. You can trust that there are more good thoughts about you in the heart of the Father than has stand on the seashore, that he blesses you right now in Jesus' name. Receive the blessing of the fatherness. Father, we just command every, every lying spirit to shut your mouth right now in the name of Jesus. We set a, a hedge of protection around God's people. Lord, will you be a fire by night and a cloud by day around your people, Father? Lord, we just ask that even angels just begin to surround the people, Father God, that will receive you, Father. And Lord, begin to beat back the demonic so that Holy Spirit can minister to the hearts of your people, Father God. Lord, we don't worship angels. We command them and we say angels go. We say angels go right now in the name of Jesus. We say angels go right now in the name of Jesus. Be filled with fire. If you need bitterness, if you have not understood while you have been hostile, while, while you have been short-tempered, you need to open your hands right now and just receive the peace of God. We speak peace right now into your heart, into your mind, and we speak peace into the shadows of even your stomach. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for what you are doing for your glory and your glory alone, Father God. Lord, we know that you're returning to a spotless prize, so we just receive your peace. Father, we just received yes, your ministry. Yes, yes. We received your ministry of reconciliation. Yes, yes. We will not plow off of the handle anymore. Yes. We set boundaries in our own life. We have do's and don'ts. We will yes. read your word every day. Yes. We will seek your face every single day. We will not lose our temper. We are not controlled by our emotions. Right now, decree it over your life. You are yes. not controlled yes. by your emotions. You are not controlled by your yes. emotions. You will no longer give authority, and you will no longer say that people make me mad. You will no longer say that. You will no longer relinquish control of your emotions mm. into other people. Yes. You will no longer allow other people to make you anything. Oh, but you will allow Holy Spirit to fill you and indwell you. Root up all bitterness right now. Leave. Go. Get out. Yes, right Go. Now. 
Get out right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command you bitterness to be completely undone. We completely move all bitterness that has come through the genealogy of man. Mm. Everything that has tried to enter into the mind from the parenting, Lord. from bad parenting, we command it out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. And we just ask, Holy Spirit, would you just burn within them? Burn mm. within them, Father God. Burn within them. Help us to have the joy of the Lord, Father God. Lord, we just pray right now. Joy, joy, joy yes. over your people. Yes, yes, yes. Father yes. God. Yes. Even right now, all uh, anger. Yes. yes. Spirits of anger. Yeah, go ahead, Pamela. Okay. I just feel like so uh, right now that uh, many of you just need to say, I forgive. Come on. Just if you yes. have to say it oh, over and over every day, do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Freedom comes. Yes. Yes. As soon as she said that, she put that. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah. Confirmation of the spirit. Amen. Ooh, that's amazing. Thank uh, you, and, and, and forgive bad parenting. Yeah. Mm. Y'all forgive your parents. Yeah. They're people too. Yeah. They were flawed yeah. too. Yeah. Let go and let God. Amen, Richard. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, forgive your parents. They were flawed individuals, especially if they weren't saved. Like drugs were in my house my whole life, guys. Like mm. straight up. My, they didn't know what they were doing. They were ignorant. Oh, right. And, 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 and even Paul says that I will judge within the church. But the world, what's that got to do with me? They don't know. They're ignorant, right? It was there was it was only done in ignorance. It wasn't done intentionally. That that the, those people who molested you and beat you and spoke down to you, they were ignorant. They were ignorant. They was hurt people hurting people. It's time to forgive them. Yep. Don't allow, don't allow Satan to control you through bitterness against human beings. Yep. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank I even Jesus. yeah, go go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just I just thank you, God, that there's such a a, a spirit of, of heaviness just being lifted. Yeah. I I just thank you. And, and we don't even have to we don't have to fight what God has already done for us. He's already fought for us. He's already paved the way for victory. We don't have to toil with it, but I just know that anger, grief, and unforgiveness, and all these fruit spirits that are like bitterness, I know every single one is being released now by the Amen. Spirit of God, Amen. by the finger of God. And I, I, I thank you, Lord, that your word brings forth life. And I, I even declare and decree that the living word, living water shall begin to flow yes, out of Jesus. the bellies of those who have experienced bitterness and even declare over yourself as jack said just declare the word over yourself and even put your hand over your heart and to say the joy of the lord is my strength Hallelujah. it's not your joy it's the joy of the lord and god even sings songs of praises over his own people according to zephaniah so so so, so the lord is full of joy towards his people so let the joy of the lord be your strength Declare Amen. that and decree that for yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have found out that um, when you're lacking joy, you just go buy somebody something and give it to them. Come on. Yep. Hallelujah. <laughs> yep. That's so good. That's so good. Wow. And on that note, we posted our cash app. Man, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That was a joke, guys. That was just a joke. No, uh, I, I, I do. I, I want y'all just to respond in the comments. If, if you have, if you feel lighter right now, um, if you feel like some bitterness left, I, I really want you to comment in the in the section right now because yes. this is extremely, extremely important. When we sever ourselves from old ties, we have to understand that mm -hmm. it leaves open wounds, right? Anytime that you're tied to something, soul ties, right? Anytime that we sever ourselves. From old things, it creates a vacancy and a place in our life that Holy Spirit needs to come in and begin to mend back to himself. Yeah. Right. And so I really want to pray over you guys tonight that that have have felt like you have left there. You're lighter. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus promises to fill those voids inside of us through his Holy Spirit. Right. And if we don't. Right. Then praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Um. And so right now, I just 
I ask you to open your hands mm -hmm. and just receive the fullness mm -hmm. of the fire of the Holy Spirit right now. Because, yes, Jesus. Because he wants to come in and all those places. He wants mm -hmm. to fill all those places so they don't hurt anymore. He, mm -hmm. all, the, all those wounds, all those places, all that bitterness, all that bitterness. The next time that person's name comes up, it's not going to hurt anymore. Yep. There's a difference in a sore and a scar. Yep. You could see them both, mm -hmm. but a scar is our testimony. Yep. I'll tell you my testimony all day long, and it doesn't hurt. A Amen. sore is an infected place that, that can't get healing, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 it just forever hurts, and no matter what you do to it, like it's always a sore. It's always mm -hmm. oozing and pussing, mm -hmm. and when somebody touches it, we, we wince. Yeah. Amen, Miss Louise. Praise Thank you so Lord. much. And Praise so... God, Louise. Eventually, you got to snatch the Band-Aid off and let the sun heal it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on. The, the sun. Yes. Yeah. S-O-N, sun. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bring Amen. it into the light. So, so, yeah. so, so, so that's just a quick snippet of, of, of what we do when, when we separate ourselves from old soul ties, right? When we sit before God and ask him to sever old soul ties, we have to mm -hmm. understand that that's leaving a void in our life. It's mm -hmm. leaving a, a void in our soul, in our mind, our will, and our emotions, right? So we have to ask Holy Spirit to now come back and heal those places in us. That's right. And heal those. Mm -hmm. Even when we become detached, we're detached now, but yeah. we still need Holy Spirit to heal us. Yeah. And so right now, Father God, Lord, I just bless each person on here, Father. I yes. thank you that you have delivered, Father God. I thank you that by the faith that these people had in you, that That's you right. have delivered them, Father God. Lord, I ask you to mend the hearts right now by your Holy Spirit. Lord, let your golden thread of love just begin to, to, to sew up the places that were damaged, Father God. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit just flooding in. Every vacancy in their heart right now, Lord, I just ask you to fill it with your Holy Spirit. Be filled and sealed for the day of redemption. In Jesus' name, Lord, I just thank you right now that you are filling the hearts, Father. New fire. New fire right now in the name of Jesus. New fire yes. right now. A fire that will burn for all those to see around them. A, a fire that will burn when the next person expects yes. someone to fly off the handle and there is no more handle. Thank you, I thank you, God, that these people will not respond in anger. No more middle fingers in the traffic line. Yes. No, no more <laughs> freaking out on the kids because things didn't go just the way we said. Yes. Even the children will understand that there is a difference right now, Father God. Yes. Lord, I thank you that you are filling them with you, God. That you are filling them with you. That again, you're just simply keeping your word that you said that the Father and the Son would come in and make your place inside of us, God. So, Lord, let, let, let these people be filled right now. Delvin, I love you, brother. Thank you. I, I, Hallelujah. I just bless you. That's right now in the name yes. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you guys in the name of Jesus. Oh, my goodness, I love you guys. Delvin, Ooh. I got on your shirt. Yeah. You see it? <laughs> I gotta get me a shirt. Oh my! <laughs> you got the three and one. <laughs> we gonna we gonna we gonna bless you up back. We need to talk about Devin. We talking about Devin. Yeah. Sarah, don't buy that shirt. Just send me your size. We are gonna get you a shirt. Devin, get her shirt. We'll see you. Yeah. Send me a bill, <laughs> Devin. <laughs> no more. Snacks. But we love you guys so much. Todd, love you. Rob, love you. Yeah. Man, so it's so grateful for yeah. you guys. Oh, and Sarah, thank y'all so, 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 Love so very much for being with us tonight. Um, man, people got Great free. Lord. Oh, my goodness. Heather, Nicole, I love you. Well, you. You were such a blessing here with us tonight. We are so glad that the Lord allowed us to minister with you and to you. And um, yes. just, just be blessed in the Lord. Um, I just feel in my spirit that God has so much for you that you haven't tapped into yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't I, I think he maybe he's had had something on your heart for a long time that you have just been thinking it was too big. Um, but I just really feel like, like you, you need to push through and, and the devil's been really attacking you through people um, because of the mm. gift that God has for you and, and the ministry that God has for you. So uh, push through right mm. now, just strengthen yourself in the Lord, seek his face, forgive, forgive, forgive people. And don't uh, un, take the book bag off. You can't run with the book bag on. I, 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 I love to run, right? I can't run with stuff on my back. Mm -hmm. Take it off. Mm -hmm. Take it off. Give it to God. Mm -hmm. And I believe he's done that for you tonight. And so, uh, um, wow. oh, so my good. goodness, Dale. Look at this. Wow. Glory to the king. Wow. Glory, glory. Praise God. Praise God. 
Right. Amen. Dale, you, you, you make so many people smile, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you, uh, if there was one person on the planet that you wouldn't really think was going through anything, <laughs> Delvin, you're it. <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> and, and Owen would probably be number two. Glory to the king. Amen. But I love you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Amen. Thank Amen, you. Richard. Thank you, everybody, for being oh, here tonight. Goodness. I know. Yeah. Thank y'all. This was amazing. God is so good. Amen. I love that the Holy Spirit has no yeah. time and space. That, that just, it's not existent for him. He'll do what he does when he does it, and we just allow it. But just say the word, and he'll do it. Yeah. Wow. Amen. 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 And it, it, sometimes it's just hard to receive. That's just, to be blatant, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I preach this all the time, but sometimes we just have to let John 3.16 include us. For God so loved the world. Like, it's easy to know that he loves, you know, all these other people because they don't, they don't know my dirt, right? They don't know what I deal with inside right. between my yeah. ears, right? And so sometimes we just need to realize that God so loved you. Mm-hmm. That he gave his own begotten, Amen. only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Like you need to put yourself in that. Yeah. Like some, sometimes that's hard. Mm -hmm. Like I, you just need to receive the love of God mm -hmm. to, to get out the root of bitterness. When mm -hmm. we focus on the Savior, like it's impossible. It's impossible to be bitter. When you get your eyes so focused on Jesus yeah. Christ and what he did and, and, and how amazing he is and how powerful he is and how uh, set up so far above all of the garbage from this world. When, when, and he did that for you. And he's the king of the universe. Like he holds stars in his hands. Wow. Like when, when you can grasp that and, and just begin to try to even somewhat with our with our human mind, like we can't we'll never really take on that the gravity of what yeah. it means to have yeah. the savior. Like heaven went bankrupt yeah. for you and me. Wow. Like the king of the world stepped down off the throne to put yeah. on a dirt suit, like to become a man, to shed his blood. And when we when we get focused in on that, it's impossible to be mad. Yeah, it's impossible to be bitter. That's bitter. <laughs> bitter. <laughs> I said that word has just been deleted. Just gone now. Yeah, just out. You know, it's funny because uh, when you get rid of bitterness, you ch your whole outlook on God changes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You seem different. You do. You yeah. don't seem as a yeah. mean God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, I, that, I, that, I that's the contrast between Jerry. Yeah. I love putting God in that perspective. Like you said, Jack, like I'm, I'm a person that I stargaze and I love astronomy. The, the, not astrology, <laughs> astronomy. <laughs> yeah. And like when I think about the fact that God made the earth and all the heavens, like the earth is so small compared to all of the universe and all the stars in it. And literally God knows every single star, every planet, every piece in the universe. He knows wow. it. And yet he still knows every hair on our body. And wow. he knows it before we were even born. So that lets you know how important you are to God. Mm -hmm. When there are, there are a innumerable amount of things in the universe, but yet one person, you, he knows mm -hmm. and he's died for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Amen. So good. Amen. Yeah. And good, good teaching lesson right there too, because there's a huge difference between astrology and astronomy. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts. I, 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 I get God it. tells us to watch the stars, but he doesn't say to identify yourself by them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we need to pass that stinking thinking down. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I love that, bro. I love that. Well, God bless you all, man. Um, let me give a little drop for Mama's little store that she started online too. So, uh, she just okay, okay, okay. okay. So, good Father's Day presents if you guys would like any. Um, what's it called? Faith Out Loud. Uh, Faith Out Loud is her online store, and okay. you can share it in the, in the things. And, She's had it for a while, but we started remodeling the house, so everything got crammed in a corner, and we shut it down. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't keep up. Yeah, and we we do have the July July eighth. Man, I don't know why I always say July fourteenth. 
but the July 8th meeting coming up. Super excited about that. Um, if you guys would like to give into it, you know, more than welcome. It's very appreciated. It's great, great, great ground. Um, people are going to get it just totally renewed in Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And so uh, uh, just want to put that out there. Delvin said, I need one of these. <clears throat> Amen. You got it, man. And so, uh, um, Christina, can't wait. Uh, Richard, how y'all guys doing, man? Love you. And uh, just super excited on what the Lord's doing. Amen. Amen. You know, wh where, so what city in Florida are you guys in? Davenport. Davenport. Okay. Yeah. It, the oneness, the oneness in the spirit that we share as the core group. Shout out to, the core to, group. to, to, yeah. to all the core group, uh, to Mama and Papa Steven, uh, Mama, yeah. Mama Jenny, <laughs> Papa Steven. <laughs> And uh, yeah. we love you yeah. and, and honor you as, as the leaders and uh, so grateful. Um, yes. Apostle, Apostle Jenny, Jenny. and Stephen. Yeah. And so uh, yeah. but the oneness in the spirit is is what we have to mm -hmm. share. We have to go at it. We have to share it because that is what Jesus returns for is the spotless bride. So we need to get more people in the bride before he comes back. Amen. 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 One thing I want to say about the core group is it is a safe place. Mm -hmm. Speak on everyone. Yeah. Yep. See, Jenny has built a safe place for women and for the men. Yes. Mm -hmm. And be honorable or, you know, just have sisters that don't that's talk right. about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that stuff ain't even tolerated around there, boy. You get kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> ain't no talking about each yeah. other. Ain't no you, you meet up meet up on a Zoom call or something to have it out, but you ain't that's gonna be talking right. about everybody's back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But the oneness that we share in the yeah. spirit, man. Uh, you know, all, all of our core group on here, you guys. You know, we love y'all so much. Cherish you guys so much. Uh, you know, we we do. I, I love our local church that we mm -hmm. attend there. Uh, you know, I love them, and but it's amazing how God can have such distance between us and keep us together um yeah so yeah. uh and, and and shout out to anybody who's from our local church here too we mm -hmm. love 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 you guys honor you amen yeah just like all the little comments amen yes. yeah. amen allison allison is an incredible singer yeah and keyboard yeah and we nice. love you. yeah yeah Incredible gift of God on her life. Yes. Miss Kim, how you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <clears throat> but listen, I want to put this out here. Um, you guys kind of talked about it, but if you're in the core group and you ain't got nothing happening in your life on July 8th, I need you to be at Jack and Pamela's <laughs> meeting. I don't it, it's what date is that? Let matter of fact, everybody pull your calendar out. July 8th. <laughs> what is that? Saturday night? Yeah, Dave from Hard Works is dead. Pull the calendar out. She said, <laughs> That's right. That's July 8th. That's the second Saturday in the month. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yep. that means if you within the tri state of Georgia, so that's <laughs> yeah. Florida, what's the name? Alabama. Alabama. And what's the one on top of Georgia? South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. That tri state. And we even go Tennessee because you're kind of close too. There Get you go. Behind to Jack and Pamela's. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. And, and share. Sh yes. Share the event, please. Um, yes. Uh, that that does more than what you guys could ever even possibly know. Just sharing it. Just mm -hmm. it, and share it with the like, I am not your common pastor. I promise you like drug addiction, whole nine yards, fatherless past. Like like I am not your common. So if, if you have a neighbor and you think that joker just lost it, please invite them. Because yeah. that's the type of people I want. I don't want a bunch of church people there. And and no no, no shots at church people. No Tell church, them, Jack. Look, no, no, no shots at church people. I love y'all. I, I love the church people. That's my brethren. That's my family. But y'all, we need to reach the lost. We need to we need to help bring the prodigals home. We need to be baptizing in the Holy Spirit those that are addicted to drugs that just go right. out and go, man, what God did for me. You right. know what I mean? This, well, the, the we do people. need the people that have lost their fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. If you've been in a, it, <laughs> Todd's <an> ice man. <laughs> hey, somebody's oh, got to say it, brother Todd. Um, 
I appreciate the Iceman status. Just, just speak the unadulterated word of God. Don't yeah. sugarcoat nothing. If I want a sugar cookie, I'll go Publix, man. I don't <laughs> I don't need the sugar of the world. I'll need the word of God. So Amen. Man, just preach Amen. it, man. Yeah. Amen, dude. And so uh that's really what our gear has to become. Yeah. Right. We we've sat in the churches long enough. Like, so, you know, by you sharing this thing, your friends, it don't, doesn't matter who they are, right? Like, you don't know what heart you will touch. Like, don't be ashamed. Like, I'm telling you right now, like religion, I did a little short on YouTube and, and it talks about how you know if you're under manipulation of a religious spirit. And if, it, and if it's that you share something on Facebook, right? And then you're like, oh my goodness, what is that big church group going to think of me? What, if they think that I'm connected to that person or I like that person or I like their stuff, or I'll go back and delete it. Right. That's that's a religious spirit that works in our minds that think makes us think, well, I really like the spiritual stuff and being free in the spirit and who the sun sets free is free indeed. And man, I, I know that, you know, I've had these battles in my life with demons and I need to learn how to overcome them and all that stuff. But what's that church down the road going to think? Mm. That's a religious spirit. Yep. <laughs> right. And so we, we need to connected. proudly, we need to proudly support our brothers and sisters who go at God wholeheartedly. Yeah. Right. And because yeah. none of us are perfect. I don't care what you can get a million Baptists in a room together. And you ain't gonna get two of them to agree on all of theology. Right. We got to throw that stuff out the window. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we have to become a people that just go after God unashamedly. We just have to go after the things of God in every aspect of our life to the best of our ability and using the anointing God has for you. Amen. Right. Because, again, same with same with Meth I ain't picking on Baptist, same with Methodist, same with Episcopalian. Like if you lock two pastors that have the exact same denominational following in, in a room and say, I want you to agree on every form of scripture, it won't happen. Nope. No. So we have to, you know, mm -hmm. de demons are so real. Right. And we need to support our brothers and sisters that know how to go after the kingdom of darkness by the kingdom of light. That's right. We, we, we have to support our brothers and sisters who unashamedly want to see Jesus infiltrate every aspect of social status in this country. Amen. Like whether it's government, whether it's school, whether it's education, whether like we have to support our brothers and sisters because there's a lot of lonely men and women of God out there right now. That don't even that they feel like outcasts because they believe in deliverance. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Exactly. And deliverance is a third of Jesus Christ's ministry. So if you don't believe in deliverance, you obviously don't believe in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Right. Correct the moon, though. Because even Jesus said when referring to de deliverance, right, that it's the children's bread. Deliverance is for the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. Deliverance isn't it's even not, for the lost it's world. It's not for the world. Amen. Right. So, so we need to support each other. Yes. We need to love one another unashamed. Amen. 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 So I, I love you guys. I can honestly sit here and do this all night long. This is it's beautiful. This is just absolutely yeah. beautiful. That's all I can say. And I and Sarah and I, we love you, Jack and Pam, so much. So much. Like you guys are near and dear to, to our hearts. And um and we're just our hearts are overjoyed. Our cup runneth over Amen. just being here. Amen. Same for us. Yeah. Same for us. We love you guys and my goodness, I will never forget. I'll, I'll never forget when we first met Owen and and uh, the, yeah. the the small men group that we have, and, yes. and, and and Julio and Juan, and and the first time that I ever met you guys, and just the transparency mm -hmm. at the and, retreat, we got to see. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, and then yeah. when we all met up, and it was already like family. Mm -hmm. Already, it was <laughs> already. I, I I never I never and you, you laugh about uh about loving church people, but. So much of my life, I've never experienced in certain churches where just such a pure and immense love of God that when I met this man of God here, I literally was just like, I just gave him a bear hug. I was like, come here, my brother. I was like, oh, I love you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. So good. And we want to extend that. We want to extend that down here in Effingham County. Mm -hmm. This is a very religious place, y'all. This is deep southern Georgia. Yeah. Like everybody is has got religious bondages. And um, I shouldn't say everybody. Sorry, God, forgive everybody. me. Uh, it, 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 it's 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 large. It's large here. And, and um, there's a lot of people that, you know, God, God has shown me that there's a lot of people who are very isolated because we don't understand that there's a lot of people just like us. Mm -hmm. And so we, we just want to reach out and, mm -hmm. and, and unite those people. Yeah. Get that and, word. And, 
Amen. Get the word. Let's get the word. Amen. 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 And so we're grateful for you guys. Love you all. Thank you all for being with us tonight. And uh, we will see y'all next Sunday. And uh, coming back. Coming back. (laughs) And y'all coming back. And Delvin's coming back. Y'all, this thing, like, this has been such a blessing. (laughs) Oh, my goodness, man. My goodness. It's like, uh, you know, I think think right now for, for, for guests having everybody on, I'm like six weeks out. And we, we still have like uh, another eight people that need to come on as well. And so, but I'm already ready to go back to getting everybody else on. It's already been on. <laughs> My God. So, yeah, this is going to just keep going, man. Yeah. This, this is, this would not be the last time anybody, any of you know, if you guys are on here or I'll ask you to be on here to be up to you whether or not you are. But uh, this, is, this is family and uh, we love you. Yeah. We love you. Love you guys. Love everybody. All right, we'll see y'all later. Bye, everybody. Bye.